God has given us the power to choose. It's called a measure of faith. Glory to God. <clears throat> Anybody want to be blessed today? Amen. We'd have to be an idiot if you didn't, right? <clears throat> Welcome to training for reigning. <laughs> this is not a Bible study. This is a training session. Amen. Jesus never came to bring religion. Amen? Amen. Do you know the whole time that you're here, you're being trained for a purpose in eternity? Hallelujah. Whoa. So everything you're doing here now is going to affect you then. Amen. See, people don't get that because they're so caught up in themselves. Short-sighted, can't tell the difference. Living for self doesn't work. Doesn't work. But God has a plan for each and every one who's willing to accept it and cooperate with it. Amen? Amen? Let's go to 3 John. So God is raising up soldiers. He's known as the commander-in-chief. He's the commander-in-chief of the military, right? That's who Jesus is. People keep looking at him, some kind of religious myth, some kind of religious dude. God is not religious. Amen. He's God. He doesn't have to be. <laughs> but there's a lot of religious poop out there. Deceiving people. Doctrines of demons. God warned us all about it through his word. <clears throat> he said many will come in his name. False prophets. False witnesses. And they will cause people to stray. Draw them away. With doctrines of demons. Deceiving, seductive, and seducing spirits. that draw people away. You know one of the problems we're always having is so many distractions in our life. The enemy loves to send distraction. He sends distraction by money. He sends distraction by loss. He sends distraction by fame. He sends distraction by how you feel. Amen. <clears throat> we have Mr. and Mrs. Feeling. I live out of the soul. He's trying to penetrate the soul so we no longer live out of the soul. Amen? Amen. But it takes cooperation. <clears throat> In verse 2, 3 John verse 2, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Beloved. Is anybody there? Amen. Okay, praise God. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Everyone say prosper. prosper. <clears throat> anybody want to prosper? Amen. Well, it's a terrible thing to prosper on the wrong assignment. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God wants us to prosper, first of all, spiritually. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your what? Soul prospers. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotion. Um, did you get all that? Amen. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, your conscience, your desires. This is a part of your soul. And he's trying to convert your soul. So that it's in the image and divine nature of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. To restore it. So he says, listen, your soul must prosper. That means there must be a place where there's an exchange of worldly traditions and belief systems of men for godly traditions and belief systems of the creator. There must be an exchange. And unless you're not willing to make that exchange, you'll stay and live out of the soul. And you'll be dictated by how you feel. And by what you think. Hello? Amen. Instead of being dictated by truth. Amen. Oh, glory. Did you ever hear those people saying, oh, that's my soul tie? Bummer. <laughs> you better cut that loose. That's my soul mate. <clears throat> Bummer. You better cut that loose. 
That's an emotional entanglement. <clears throat> All right, you ready? Verse 3. For I what? Rejoice. I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the what? Truth. The truth that is in you. In other words, so their soul was being converted with truth. Just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Again, your soul must prosper by exchanging worldly traditions and belief systems of men for traditions and belief systems of the creator. That is truth. And where we, these truths got to be ex exchanged, that is in your thoughts, your mind, in your will, your choices, your emotions, and your feelings, in your imaginations, your desires. How about your motives and attitudes? All of those things. See, people don't really look at those things because they don't examine them. They just move in how they feel, never realizing what the motive is or the attitude is. We are to prosper. That means advance. He says, man, if you prosper in your soul, you're going to become healthy. He said, you'll prosper in all things. So there's an area where you and I got to get to that place where we prosper in the soul. But first you must learn how to penetrate the soul. Because you can't convert the soul unless you penetrate it first. Amen. You can't even set the soul on fire until you penetrate it first. So you want to penetrate the soul, then ignite it and blow it up. <laughs> Woohoo! What happened to you? Whoa! I penetrated. <clears throat> Romans 12. All glory. Romans chapter 12. So there's an area of converting the soul, but you can't convert it unless you penetrate it. Penetrating the soul. Now, as soldiers of the Most High, we have three places that we must fulfill. We are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. Does everybody get that? Amen. See, you can't do that living out of the soul. It's impossible. You can only do it by living out of the spirit. And unless the soul is being converted, there's the process of conversion of the soul to the divine nature has dominion. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your what? Your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or your reasonable service. So every day we want to present our spirit, soul, body, and flesh to the Lord as a living sacrifice. I go a little further. Even my desires and possessions, Lord, those are yours. I present them to you. <clears throat> Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind or of your soul. By the renewing of your soul, the converting of your soul. Why? So you no longer live out of the soul, you live out of the spirit. Ooh. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Why? Because your soulish arena you and I were born with cannot fulfill or prove the will of God. It's impossible. So there must be a conversion. And that conversion is constant because we have a tendency to pick up soulish arena things. Emotional attachments, that's, that's what needs to get cut loose all the time. So renewing your soul, converting the soul until the divine nature of Christ is perfected. This is the process of conversion. But it first takes penetrating the soul.
Proverbs 23. Yes. God willing, it's Proverbs 23. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Is everybody there? Let's speak the first three verses. When you sit down and eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man of given to appetite. And do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Now, I want you to know that deceptive food is food. These are words that promote and puff up the soul. Does everybody get it? There are words that promote and puff up the soul. They are called deceptive food. Watch this in verse 6. Do not eat the bread of a what? Miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Wow. Don't speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Now, he says, when you hear, see the word eat, it means agree. It means what? Agree. Agree. So to eat is to agree or partake of the words because words can penetrate the soul. Affecting thoughts, affecting emotions, decisions, affecting your desires, your appetite, even promotes you to associate with things that are displeasing with God. So, what, that's why we share with you what you eat, what you speak is what you eat, what you eat is what you become. And words don't go to the ground, do they? Proverbs 18. That's how people be getting um, caught up in strongholds. Because a stronghold is a memory lie. So when things were spoken over them, at some time, they ate it. They accepted it. They partake of it. And now it's affecting them. And so many times when we were small and little and whatever, uh, things were spoken to us in either correction or uh, some other way that was taken or misunderstood or taken as evil or wicked or threatening, it affects a person's soul. That's why the enemy loves to molest children. He knows it'll affect them tremendously. That's how we get a lot of, um, that's where most of homosexual, lesbian, and transgender spirits come from because they've been molested as children and it passes down the line. Proverbs 18, is everybody there? Verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are what? Deep Deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Deep means resources. Deep waters is resources. Let's go to verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his what? His mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will what? Eat its fruit. So what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. Very powerful. So we see here these deep resources... In other words, it's always good to find out where these resources are. Who's, who told you that? Where is it coming from? Amen. Feed yourself. We're to feed ourselves with righteous words because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Again, what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone. He gave us the key formula. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why? Because he knows God's words will penetrate the soul for conversion. 
The Bible is recorded words of the Creator, and when spoken, they penetrate the soul to allow the conversion. But first, there must be penetration. It can't be conversion without penetration. And penetration is established by your words that you accept through God's word of God. Amen? Hebrews 4. You've been hanging around me too long. <clears throat> In verse 11. Hebrews 4, verse 11. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He brewed. Did anybody brew this morning? <laughs> Verse 11, let's speak it. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful. It's living and powerful. It's living and powerful. And what else? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In other words, it's going to cut. It's going to pierce. It's going to penetrate. Piercing even the division of the soul, the spirit, and joints and marrows, and discerners of thoughts and intents of the heart, attitude and motives. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all these things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Nobody escapes. Nobody escapes. Amen? Amen. So we see here the word of God, when spoken, penetrates the soul. It allows access for me and you so that it can be ignited and burn darkness out and exchanging it with light. Penetrating the soul is the first and utmost by decree and proclamation out of your mouth to enter your soul. The words of God are used to penetrate darkness. And by speaking the words, we speak and declare and we sing the words and we shout the words. So when the words come up here, on the, up here don't turn from them. Don't get caught up in yourself. Don't get on your face. It's not time for that. Amen? Don't be dancing around and not looking at it. Look at the words and speak them because that's the only way it's going to get in your soul. Amen? Other than that, the enemy gets you by emotion. So that you're caught up in you and you're just, I'm just going to receive. You ain't getting stinking nothing Amen. until you sow. Sow. That's why people fall into the soulish arena and they begin so contacted and connect with, with emotional attachments and all kinds of things and can't get free. Amen. Why? Because there's a spiritual law called sowing and reaping. And it's for everyone. Whether you believe it or not, you're in it. Amen. What you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. Amen. What you sow to the spirit, you reap life. Deliverance doesn't come without sowing. Amen. It can't. You can cry all day long, Lord, help, Lord, help. He says, okay, come here. In fact, he doesn't even answer you until you call him in the name of Jesus. Does everybody get this? Don't get so caught up in the soul again. I'm looking, to, I'm, I'm waiting for God to touch me. He'll touch you when you touch him. Amen. And you touch him by speaking, speaking, singing, shouting, declaring, Living out of the soul brings fear, brings anxiety, brings stress. Brings deception, brings confusion, brings your past. Psalm 13 and verse 1 through 6. 
whole, I guess that's the whole psalm. Yeah. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? <laughs> Having sorrow in my heart daily. Woezy measy. How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Listen, he just decreed that his soul was his enemy. Somebody get this. Man, how long is this going to continue? Consider and hear me, O Lord. My God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Let those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will what? I will what? I will sing. What's he going to do? Decree. It's called songs of deliverance. Why are they songs of deliverance? Because when you sing them, you're eating them. You're eating light. Spirits of darkness are going to begin to move out of you. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen? It would be nice if we can dance off those demons, and we might be able to dance off a few. But you can't dance them all off. But you can sing them all out. <laughs> Glory. We don't want counsel from the soulish arena. That's what the world offers. Amen? Yes. They offer soulish counsel. That's called management. Yes. Only through penetrating the soul can there be freedom. We don't want soulish counsel. We want the counsel from the Spirit of God. Living out of the soul is dangerous. Living out of the Spirit is victory. Amen. The soul must be penetrated on a daily basis. Daily. What? To ignite. So that there's a conversion. And then we must maintain that conversion. The enemy comes to steal everything, doesn't he? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has brought us life and life abundantly. It can't be life and life abundantly if you're an individual that lives out of the soul. If you're making all your decisions and how you feel. Or you're a man pleaser. Or a woman pleaser. You must be a God pleaser. <clears throat> Psalm 119. Penetrating the soul. Psalm 119 and verse 9. <clears throat> Everybody there? Amen. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to what? Your word. Your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I will declare all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Out of his mouth, he says he speaks. Why? Because out of the mouth speaks the heart, doesn't it? <clears throat> Jesus gave the formula to escape. Escape deception and escape God's wrath. That was deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him. That was the formula for that. But there is another formula for penetrating. And that's in Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 7. When you ask, you do what? You speak. Amen. Ask to speak. You declare. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek. That means you seek or search consistently. Seek and you will find. Knock 
and the door will be open to you. Knock is to penetrate for exchange. You are exchanging. There's a conversion of exchange in the soul. So you're in this conversion. So now that you have penetrated, now you're able to ignite and burn. Remember the song we sing, burn all my soul. Set me on fire. What? All darkness. Well, you, they ain't going to burn. It ain't going to go unless you uh, penetrate first. Nothing happens without penetration. Nothing. Does everybody understand this? So the formula is to speak and do it consistently. And you will penetrate. The door will be open to you to access. And then access is granted. Amen? James chapter 1. <clears throat> That's why I have a penetrating prayer booklet. That prayer booklet is going to assist you in penetrating. You don't have to figure out what you need to pray. Just look it up. Songs of deliverance, penetrating. James 1.21. James 1.21. <clears throat> Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of what? Wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls or convert your souls. Be doers of the word of God and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is an idiot. Oh, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom or liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Now look at this. He's saying, if anyone among you thinks that he is religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, in other words, doesn't speak the things that are edifying and converting to the soul, does everybody see, hear, see that? But deceives his own heart. This one's religious is useless. Useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this, that they visit the orphanage widows in their trouble and keep, keep, keep oneself unspotted from the world. Keep oneself unspotted from the world. The word is given to us to penetrate and convert their soul. But we got to bridle our tongue with all unrighteousness words. Why? Because unrighteous words have no faith connected to them. Amen? No faith connected to them. That's why he says there was no effect because faith wasn't connected to it. So if faith is not connected to it, and faith is your connection with the presence of God. And the connection with God's presence comes by worship. So you get connected with God's presence. Does everybody understand that? And faith is the connection. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. But the word of God should always bring you to the presence of God. Is everybody with me? Do you understand this? So faith is actually your connection. Why? Because it's a place of trust. The level of faith you have is the victory you walk. That means the level of your connection that you have with the Lord. And we want to reach the master's level. Amen. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13. Let's speak it together. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, there's that conversion of the soul. You know, think about a child. It's always me, 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 I, 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 want, want, want. It's always about me, self. That's what a, ch a child is. But when there's a conversion of the soul, it's him, him, him. There's a difference. Now you live for him, not you. You don't live for man. You don't live for nothing else but him. There's the conversion. 
But you got to penetrate the soul first. Why? Because you know that your mission is eternal, not temporary. What you're here on this earth in a temporary realm, if you're connected to the eternal reality, you're different. You don't want anything to interfere with what God wants. Nothing. And you only associate it with those that God wants. So you're like-minded. I don't have friends. I have brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters are those who do the will of God. Those are the ones I associate with. There are other ones that I don't. There are many who proclaim to be doers of the will of God, but their fruits don't show it. They're fruitless. Hello. Okay. Verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall not. I shall know just as I am known. And now abide what? Faith. Faith is the first one. Why? Because that's the connection to God's presence. Hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love because there's always God's fruit peace joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is God's love amen soulish words got to be careful of amen It'll also promote pride it's puffed up and I'm going to close at Psalm 19 penetrating the soul this morning's training session Psalm 19. <clears throat> Glory. Starting at verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. Day and today utter speech, and night and tonight reveals knowledge. How many of y'all know that God's trying to release something to you while you sleep? Amen. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Jesus coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from his heat or his presence. The Lord, the law of the Lord is what? Is the law written? Yes, it's called word. It's his commands. They're what? They're perfect. In other words, his words are perfect. Converting the what? The soul. Whoa. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than any honey in honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. And keeping them there is great reward, but not keeping them there is trouble. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. That's called assuming. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and a meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed that's been imparted in us penetrate through the soul, convert it to every righteous area. producing and converting the soul, producing the divine nature of Christ Jesus, that he may be expressed in us and through us. 
in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.